Welcome back to Athletic Every Day, day number 41. And today, I started out with isometrics as usual. It's a sprinting day today. And when I opened my curtains this morning, I realized that it was snowing. And because I don't have access to an indoor running track, that's definitely complicating things for me quite a bit. So I decided, right, I'm gonna make myself coffee. I thought I'd do this shot because I always like the way the crema looks. And I'm very lucky to have an espresso machine at my house. Definitely needed this coffee today because when I walked out, <laughs> I decided that I was going to sweep the entire path of the, the track that I sprint on or the hill that I sprint on because I thought a hill would be the safest point to, to do so I won't slip. So this entire path, I spent probably 20 minutes to half an hour sweeping it so that I could actually get a safe and effective workout in. I mean, doing the warm up on the hill wasn't so great, like running downhill and trying not to slip and go over speed is quite tricky. As you can see, it was kind of really cold and snowing. And I was just thinking to myself, like how many people would actually go and do this? Like what percentage of people in the world would actually go and go out of their way to just sweep a pavement just so they could sprint on it and spend an hour or so doing that? And I don't think there's that many. I'm not trying to sort of big myself up, but to be honest, who would actually do that? And it makes me think of that that Shia LaBeouf song. Um, just do it. <laughs> Yesterday you said tomorrow, don't let your dreams be dreams. And he also said, you want to reach the point where anyone else would quit and then just go and work hard at it. And I think this is one of those points where a lot of people would just quit and <laughs> not want to do it. You know, you don't have access to a, a place where you can sprint. It's cold, it's snowing, it's raining outside. My hands were freezing and yet yeah, I still just carried on with this workout and I felt so good after having done this and I shit you not, it is just one of the best feelings when you go and do something that's like incredibly, incredibly high resistance, incredibly high adversity. I mean, the workout itself wasn't particularly difficult. It's just overcoming the mental hurdles, mental barriers to actually get myself to go and do this was probably the hardest thing. Uh, but yeah, overall, actually in the workout... Uh, it was programmed to do as the main thing. It was six sets of sprints, which was two sets of 20 and four sets of 40 meters. Uh, I ended up doing probably six sets of 25 to 30 meters because it's a hill. That's a cool shot there. You can see the, the running water. Yeah, I ended up doing, yeah, f six sets of probably 25 to 30 meters. I measured it out. I usually do strides to measure it out because I know that my strides are about a yard or somewhere around a meter in length and I sort of do an extended extended stride to make sure that's at least a meter if not more. I did 20 of them and I was like looking up at the hill where my bag was. So I usually measure it out by from where I've measured out. I'll put something to measure that point and then I'll go to my bag or wherever my phone is. Probably not the most accurate way to measure but hey, it's, it's at least the distance if not more. And I looked up at my bag and I was like, that's not 20 meters. So I, I took another five or so strides down. So I would say it was probably, to have a generous estimate, I would say 25 meters, but more likely closer to 30. So I ended up doing six sets of 30 meter sprints on a hill and they felt all right. They weren't too bad. I didn't feel like I had grip as an issue. Uh, as I said, sprinting uphill, even if it's quite slippery, because uh, of the incline of the hill, it's much less likely that you're going to fall over and slip. And going back to what I was saying earlier about resistance and adversity, when it comes to especially working out, but doing anything difficult in life, uh, it's always seems a lot worse before you, when you're building up the, this mental image and this mental picture in your mind of what the thing is, it's always much, much bigger and it's always much scarier than it is when you actually just go and do it. Like building up, thinking about what I had to do before I did this work, I was like, oh, I've got to sweep the pavement. And I was saying it to myself in this kind of very sort of regretful voice or very kind of uh, foreboding voice. I'm like, oh, I've got to go and sweep that path and I've got to warm up and it's going to take like super long time. Then I'm going to be rushed and, you know, it's going to be too long. But if I just spent less time thinking about it and just literally getting into it and starting it, when you actually get into it, the resistance is gone by the time you're doing it. There's no resistance. You're just doing it. So I'm pretty probably butchering what I mean to say here, but the point I'm trying to make is that things always seem a lot worse in your mind versus when you actually just go and do them. And this workout was a perfect, uh, perfect example of that uh, particular instance. So what you just saw there were two sets of 10 rhythmic jumps. And here what you're seeing are three sets of five drop jumps, trying to get 
a super maximal vertical jump. So I'm jumping from, a, I'm conditioning my legs to land from a height, which I'm not able to jump to yet. So I can get myself, all, all the muscles in my lower body to eccentrically absorb that force so that hopefully I'll be able to jump from a high height. My legs will allow me to land uh, from that height, if that makes sense. Uh, then the last part of the workout, which was single-legged hip hinges or single-legged RDLs and uh, hip drives or knee drives. I did these at the work gym because I wasn't going to get them in before I had to get to work. So I did these, then got dressed and got straight into my shift. So I think these, the biggest barrier for me at the moment is balance. I really struggle with balancing on these. I think a lot of people do that do that. So what I'm going to start doing next time there's single legged uh, hip hinges, I'm just going to do it so this off, it's like an offset RDL. So I've still got the back foot in place uh, to give me support and balance, but like 99% of that weight or 95% of that weight is going to be in the front leg and I can still load it in the same way. Oh, also there was some side planks as well. So rep wise, it was three sets of five each leg on the single leg RDL, two sets of 10 on the knee drives, and then it was three sets of 20 seconds on the side plank each side. Probably could have done a little bit more, but I'm sure that progressively it will increase over time. That's it for me today, and I will catch you guys in the next one.